Hey everyone, uh, Joe and Isaiah is here from the Automator. We're talking to Shin from the Spanova channel. I'll put his uh, link above me here in the video. But Shin reached out the other day. He has a, what was it, the overlay class? Shin's overlay class? So, yep. Beautifully named. Yeah. Um, and he's going to demo it. So it sounded really interesting. What what was yeah. it? Remind me again of how it works. So it's a, a, a direct 2D overlay class. Um, it to be really easy to use. So it's, it's uh, I'll go over some demos, but it's so easy to set up. It's it's a really fast, really um, good performance. And it's just really easy, like I said. So yeah, when, when you said it was fat, I think you said it's faster than GDI. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's also, um, if you use a GDI overlay before, uh, it actually makes the performance of the applications below much worse. So they get stuttery and uh, mm -hmm. it just doesn't feel as good, but you don't get that with the G with the uh, direct overlay, direct 2D overlay. Very cool. Awesome. Well, the thing is that direct, <laughs> you know, direct 2D and direct 3D, you're talking almost directly to the graphics card, right? You're yeah, not passing so through the software like the uh, kernel to actually manage stuff for you. So you have to be very careful about managing memory and stuff like that, no? Uh, it's a lot of the um, Windows takes care of that, the, the wrappers and stuff that they, they okay. care, take care of for you. But what you said, yeah, it does use, it actually uses the GPU, not the CPU. So it's All right. that so you're talking is directly to the faster. GPU. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I'll go ahead and share my screens and I got some examples I can show you. Awesome. Okay. So uh, this is actually one, can, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, this is one I actually just built a little bit ago to go over everything. So this is the actual window and um, I put a little mouse trail in there just for fun, you know? <laughs> and uh, this goes through uh, everything and um, all of this is in the GitHub. So if you guys wanna run this, you know, anybody watching, you can, you have access to the exact same things I have here. But uh, here's, um, the, the line functions, you can have different sizes, you can have uh, rounded ends and starts. And then if you you know put one behind it that's bigger, you can have borders. Um, and then here's an example you could do with lines where it has like like a rain effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's running pretty fast. Not really any issues right. there. You have uh, functions for drawing ellipses, drawing circles. Uh, drawing circles is just drawing an ellipse, but with one less parameter. So it's like yeah. just like a helper function. And um, this is just all ellipses and circles here. And then uh, you have rectangles, rounded rectangles. Um, nothing really fancy here. It's just, you know, simple stuff. But it's how you use it, you know, that makes it uh, interesting. That's actually part of the part, what, what I would actually talk about. I think the, the most difficult part of what you're doing here is mainly the animation. Because, right, drawing a square or drawing a circle... Okay, but when you use a function to create the animation with the timing that it requires, right? That's where it gets a little bit tricky. Are you doing those yourself mm -hmm. or the class actually helps you animate? Uh, that is just doing it myself through. Okay. Because the, the class mainly just does the, uh, the it just gives you the, 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 the access tools to, to do right, it. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing it does do here, so the rotation is in the, the function itself, but the animation is up to the user. So in this case, um, what you see over here is the source image as, as it is on the computer. And then uh, you can increase its size. And then using the source region, you can then pick out one single frame from the sprite sheet. And then okay. you can loop through those frames to create an animation. Right. Alternatively, you could just create a bunch of like different images and then draw them one at a time. But this is um, a bit more efficient. And then, uh, and then finally, there's um, text, which uh, it has drop shadow built in as an extra option if you want it. Um, and then it's it's pretty easy to put it all together. And then uh, that's it for this demo. It just goes over all the, the basic stuff. Right. Um, another one awesome I have is a, a general example. So this is a, in the top left, you'll see this is the overlay class, which it doesn't have to be hooked to a window. It can, just like the last one, it can be its own window. But if mm -hmm. I press F1 on a window, then it, it becomes an overlay to this window. And this is the main function of my class here, is that uh, it's an easy way to incorporate an overlay onto an existing window and have uh, graphics on top of it. And then if I press F1 on here, it's on this window now. Right. And uh, the, the class takes care of all the resizing, all of the window checking. So if I go to a different window, it goes away, it comes back, it's on there again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then finally I have um, 
I'll need a notepad for this. But this is just um, a for fun one, which gives you little uh, dots around your mouse. <laughs> okay, so it's just following your mouse and... Yeah, and but it's I'm really, more... For... I'm really curious about those animations. Actually, one of the reasons why... I, so, it is interesting because I think this class not only could be used for creating games, right? Because this is really, really amazing for creating a game completely in auto hotkey, but um, also for creating GUIs in a different way because now yeah. you have full control of how the window is going to look. So, and, and, and I'm actually kind of curious about how the code looks. Can you show a little bit of an example of one of those? Like for example, uh, the mouse dots, yep, how, does I can that, open that how, does, how does that code looks like? So, okay. uh, so the way that it works is um, you start an instance of the class and the mm -hmm. parameters can be a size or it can be a title to a window. So in this case, it, it goes over the notepad window. And for the dots, um, I just created another simple class here, which takes uh, some simple parameters like um, the speed, the direction, friction and stuff. And then uh, all it does is draw an ellipse um, with those parameters set up. And the, this is the main loop right here. So it says, if overlay begin draw, which means um, if the window's in focus, if the, if the size is correct, then that is okay. You can now continue drawing. Right. And then um, I draw a rectangle on the top left that says, um, that it puts a border behind draw test, says you can uh, press escape to close it. Right. Uh, then there's a built-in function for get mouse position, which uh, returns oh, true that, if it's inside the window. Right, okay. It just makes it a little bit easier for the user instead of having this auto hockey one, then be like, is it in the window? You just have a one simple function here. Right, so this one um, just, this one actually returns whether it's inside the window or not. Yeah. So, 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 so if you actually gave it a window at the beginning to the class, so if you gave the class a window, then this mouse position will return true only yes. if it's inside that window. If it is yep. outside, then it's going to return false. Correct. Awesome. That's interesting. And then uh, I just check to see if the, if the mouse moves, and if it has, yeah, I exactly. check um, how far it's moved to determine how quick the balls move as well. All right. uh, and then I, I just add three in an array, and then I loop through the array, and uh, whenever it's finished animating, if it, either its opacity hits zero or its size is small, then I remove it. And right. then that's pretty much it. That's the entire loop right here. <laughs> well, it looks like a very simple code, actually. It's true. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, if you get rid of all the that stuff, this is as simple as it is. You just right, check if you can draw. And yep. finish the drawing. And then anything in the middle, you could just do, like, overlay dot draw a line from 50, 50 to 100, 100, and then, and then that would work right there. That would be drawing a line. I think it defaults to the color white, but, <laughs> okay. but I mean, it's that easy. Awesome. Let me ask some stupid questions, because that's what I'm good at. Um, Besides, like, I get the thing with the mouse drawing the um, the, the trail, you know, with the circles, right? But how else? Cause just because I don't do stuff with gaming, and that what? How are you using it? What are the? I, I get the functionality. I'm just trying to think through of like, okay, how would someone actually? Why would they be using it? I guess is my question. Okay. Um. Well, in this case, uh, I actually use it. A lot of what I use it for is um, combined with my scanning class to show visually where things are. And uh, I have one here. I think this one works. Yeah, so you can see in here, uh, it can detect like my health bar and it draws lines to it. So you can see exactly where it is. You can see the shape of it. Um, then just for fun, I have it showing other elements and uh, drawing lines and circles to it. And it's basically a good way to see visually what you're scanning, where that thing is you're scanning. And um, I can actually show you really quick here like in in this script specifically say i wanted to um i wanted to find a yellow color so i would come into the main drawing loop here again and i would do a if scan dot uh, pixel um and then i wanted to find a yellow pixel with the x and y so if that's found then i'll do overlay dot draw a line from the top left corner to that pixel position and if i reload this now Oh, whoops, one too many commas there. Yep. Uh, well, that might not be yellow, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not exactly that yellow color. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, so I guess I guess the, um, the color is not optional. I should add that later. But, right. but you can see it's drawing now to the first yellow pixel that it finds. 
Okay. And then so, you'll see the the speed of both of them is quite good because it's doing the scan and the drawing in real time. Yes, and it's exactly. It's, true. it's finding that's them very the, quick. That's one of the main things that I noticed. But let me let me help uh, kind of like give more information about um, uh, to Joe's question. Like, okay, well, why would you use this? But mainly in the gaming section, usually some games give you information, but you want additional information that they're not showing. The game has the information there, but it's not showing it the way you want it. So with an overlay, usually we actually present information in a different way. Or in this instance, for example, think about it as augmented reality. He's just augmenting how yeah. the game displays something in particular. Augmenting is actually, that's exactly what popped in my head was like, okay, because I know earlier you said, hey, you could use this to create games. And that got me right. going a whole different way. Right. And I'm like, okay, when, when, Shane, when you mentioned you're scanning for something, hey, you're augmenting the screen to see, to help you identify, it's not changing the game. Right. But it's no, it's not changing the game. Right. And I'm like, okay, now I thank you because I'm like, I just don't do this kind of stuff. <laughs> no, no. But then in my area, which I, I do not do much gaming programming, I would like to, you know, dive a little bit into that later. But I, I'm, I do not play that much anyways. But I do see the benefit outside of it. So just imagine a script that is actually constantly, constantly checking for something on your screen. And say, for example, that you have tons of files and you want to highlight specific files that have a specific name, right? So just imagine that you have an Explorer window with thousands of files and you have to scroll through it, but you want to automatically highlight specific files without you having to search for them or something like that. So while you scroll, you would have the script just augment that by displaying uh, something on top of them to draw attention to I it. I can give you a right. real world example because it's much more painful than you would think. <laughs> uh, in Outlook, you can have a lot of folders where you have your inbox, you know, different folders, but you can't like colorize them, right? Like it's not easy just to make it like I can make it pop if it was a different color. Right. But yeah, I, I could definitely see how something like that would be. Yeah, so, and that's what I mean. It's just like at least the, the, the interesting part here is that you can draw whatever you want onto the screen. You can draw yeah. anything you want and in a very, very fast way because as he's just displaying right. here, the thing is searching for the color, drawing a line, and he can move that as quickly as he wants. And the, the thing is really fast. If you try that with image search or with pixel search, yeah. you're going to have a little bit of a hard time. As soon as you move the screen, it's going to have to rescan the whole thing again. So it is really slow. In this instance, is instantly. Everything works. And, and it doesn't matter how the screen changes. It gets drawn right away. So I do see exactly how it benefits. In the gaming community, I know how it's used because in so certain games, we do have overlays for other kind of things. Like for example, display the weaknesses of a tank or something like that. In, yeah. a, in a tank, I have a, 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 a game that is, you know, uh, war tanks, right? And uh, certain type of tanks have certain weaknesses in certain spots. So you would, if the, the, the script, detects the type of tank and whenever it's moving it just displays where the weakness is of that tank so it, it has to do that in real time and display that's where you would use this type of overlays you know yeah <laughs> yeah but there's yeah. definitely a lot of applications for it but it's yeah, up sure. to it's kind of up to the user's imagination how they want to yeah. incorporate it into their oh. their game or application but I did, like I said, I try to make it as easy as possible to use. It's just the difference between GDI and Direct2D is that you always have to start with begin draw and end draw. Like it's it's mandatory. And uh, one thing with with these kind of overlays, it's not actually attached to the window per se. It's just always checking position. So uh, it doesn't work on full screen games. It has to be a uh, windowed or borderless windowed. But yeah, because it, it doesn't hook into it. Okay, so it doesn't hook into the to the uh, to the application itself. It's just yeah. Oh, hold on. But if it is a full screen game, wouldn't you actually get coordinates from the whole screen? Then can't you do that? Well, there's a difference between true full screen and normal full screen. Uh, oh, if right, it's true okay. full screen, obviously you have to hook into the actual um, like drawing function of the game. Oh, right. uh, but I don't do any of that because I mean a lot of games check for that and you can get banned. Yeah. But this oh, way, okay. you should be okay. Right. Okay. It doesn't modify any games. It just draws an overlay on top of them. 
cool. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know if you guys have any more questions about it or anything, but like um, I said, pretty simple. Well, the, one of the questions that come to mind is like, I, I do see that you're using loops uh, regularly whenever you're drawing. So yeah. is it something that you must be looping all the time or is it something that in this particular instance that you are actually doing something like that, you have to have a loop. But for example, if I want to draw a square that has some things and I'm not going to be redrawing that all the time, can I just call it, draw it, and that's it? Uh, yes and no. So the only reason you have it in a loop is if you're attaching it to a window because all of the window checks are in the begin draw function. And okay. if you have animations, uh, those also obviously need to be drawn very fast. However, if you're doing like... Um, in my other ex uh, example right here, like this one, where it's its own window, uh, you don't need to draw in a loop. Um, only if you want animations, like with a mouse trail, you would have to be in a loop. But otherwise, uh, you can just do it once and just keep it there. And then just update how, it only when you need to. Uh, for example, when you move the window, I would assume that you would have to redraw, right? When you yes. Move well, window, actually, yeah, no. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Actually, when you move the window, all it's doing is calling um, the move window function. So it wouldn't need to be redrawn. Um, to the window. Yeah, if it's resized, though, it would need to be redrawn. Okay. And that's and that's those are the type of questions that I wanted to ask. Because, for example, um, I, I saw you in the loop, but I, I had imagined that, you know, the, the other script that you showed that had like a little black window at the top left. I would assume yeah. that you draw you draw you drew that and that was it. You didn't loop over it. I would assume, but it is interesting to know that if you move it, you don't have to redraw. But if you just resize it, then you must. Is there any I, reasons for that? Um, the, uh, the I have I had the actual that one in a loop only because uh, my main drawing was in the loop. It just checked to see if uh, it was attached mm -hmm. or not. But the the only reason uh, you would have to put it in a loop, like I said, is if you're if you're attached to a window because it needs to know when to move the overlay, and then uh, if you want to resize it. Otherwise, like you said, there's no reason to to draw it unless you want to. Right. In the um, in this one, this is where that's actually at, which is this right here. So if I just I'll just take this out of the loop, and I'll just delete. Uh, I'll just delete all of that. And just put and then, it. Yeah. So this would be doing it that way. So I'll just put that once and I'll do uh, overlay dot begin draw. And then. I think uh, you didn't put a dot there. You need to put a dot. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> so this is uh, no looping this time. And if I run it, then uh, it's just drawn once and that's it. There's no loops going on. That, it's already that's what I done. Mean. That's awesome. Yep. And then you can. Um, you can use, uh, so I'll actually create a new hotkey here and I'll do uh, overlay dot set position. And then I'll put it at like 500, 500. And if I reload this now, then if I press F2, then it just moves. So that's how you would move it if you wanted to. And uh, it doesn't draw it, it just literally calls move window. Okay. So. And this is what I mean. So basically I could use this uh, draw, uh, um, well, this, this class, to create notification pop-ups looking yes. in a way that is not really a Windows, you know, GUI or something, or Windows 32 API. I could create a whole GUI with this that looks a little bit more modern, right? Um, because this, this, this is actually really, I, I'm impressed actually, that's what I wanted okay. to say. It is, I'm actually really impressed at, at how simple it is. I could yeah. just use this to create different controls, uh, custom controls. And then in the end, I would be able to create, create a class that you could just create an edit box, a, a picture control, whatever you want by drawing like this and having a little bit more control of how it looks. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm being very stupid here, but we, uh, I've done a couple of videos where we talk about, you know, different ways you can notify the user that something's happened, right? And, and this one is, it's so simple, right? I'm yeah. Like, hey, it put up a, a little overlay to say the file's done processing or whatever, right? Like, right, uh, yes. Um, very nice, simple, easy way to do that. Very yeah, cool. I mean, uh, then you could take like some simple uh, rectangles or even rounded rectangles to make some cool progress bars, you know, for if you're doing something, you know, put a little text inside it. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. I do, um, in, in my 
uh, um, this is just personal preference. I don't know if this is really possible to do or if this is something that there is certain limitations. But usually, you see this begin draw and end draw. Why yeah. isn't it that you put it, why don't you put those inside the functions? So all your functions, like for example, field rectangle, when you call the function, why doesn't do, do the begin and end draw inside the function so that the user doesn't have to do that? Now, I do see one situation in which I would understand that I want to have control about it is when I have begin draw, fill rectangles, do some animations, and then after the draw, I want to do something else. But again, every time I call the function, it would just do it for me. Why wouldn't you do that? Is there so any the reason? reason uh, there is a reason for that, and that's just how Direct2D works. Well, DirectX in general, um, mm -hmm. when you when you do begin draw, it tells the basically Direct2D that that this is the drawing process beginning, and it also takes care of clearing the background so that everything that was drawn before gets removed. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> unfortunately, the, I because I did try to make this as easy as possible, and there's just no good way around this. Because um, mm -hmm. again, it has to be um, it has to be cleared, or everything everything's going to be uh, drawn on top of each other, and it's going to become a big, big giant mess. Mm -hmm. uh, so really, there's no way around it. Sadly, uh, um, no, I understand, and that's that's the reason why I ask because sometimes there is a reason behind that. But yeah. uh, I didn't know that whenever you do the begin the begin draw, it actually removes the previous yep. drawings. All right, okay, I didn't know that because I thought about that too. I, I wanted to make it as easy as possible to right, jump in into, general, but and I have noticed all the all the all the drawing functions like GDI and all all of them have this uh, way of working in which you have to specify that you're beginning and specifying when you end. So I didn't know what the reasoning was, but it looks like whenever you start, it actually has to kind of like clear up the Canva before yeah. you go ahead. <clears throat> which, really which to, for, for those of us that are, you know, lesser programmers, uh, that because in this example here, it wouldn't matter because you're drawing one thing, right? But right. when, if you had uh, another 17 and 18 that you were trying to do, if that was embedded inside the function or the method, as, as you were saying, it would clear it out each time it did it, right? Is that, that's the... So, so let's just try something. Can you grab lines 16 to 19, duplicate them? 16 to 19, just duplicate them all. Yeah. Now the second one, make it a different right. color or a different position. Right. Yeah, I'll put it at a, yeah. I'll put it at the 500 position. So it should be right, right. where you see it now. Right, uh, uh, you put 5,000 right there, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> now if you run it, that means that I should only see one one of them? Yeah, is that you what will you're see. You'll see only this one. Only right that here. one, right? Okay. So yeah, so that. Oh, actually. Uh... Uh... <laughs> okay, I actually don't know why it's drawing. Uh... Just the first one on top, right? Yeah. Because it's live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, because it's live, right? So I mean, I think I might have found so a new if bug. You comment, if you comment, if you comment out line sixteen to to nineteen, comment them out. Just and now, them. just just run that one, and let's see what happens. Oh no! So you're running mm -hmm. the wrong one. That's what happens. You're in general example. So you're running the wrong script. Is it? Yeah, this is the right one. Yeah. Oh, then uh, I don't know what is going on. I also don't know what's going on. Oh, oh, it's because I set. Um, this up here. Ah. Oh, whoops, whoops. I was doing it the wrong way. This this doesn't take GUI coordinates. Whoops. All right. Okay, so it should work uh, now. There we go. So I forgot, this doesn't actually take GUI coordinates. So okay. I would have to call this if I wanted to move it. So I'll move it after okay. that. Now, so what would be the uh, the color of the other one? Okay, so. This so would be I pure black I put on this one, but I'll change it to red to make it right, more. So, so that's the point. So I want to verify um, with the color change, which one is, uh, yeah. So right now I yeah. see that the second one that is being drawn is the red one. So the, the black one, I didn't even see it. Yeah. So, however, if you commented out 19 and 23, is this right? right? Then it would do two, you yeah, would so, have two rectangles. So, right. so if I 19, got rid of this right here. No, no, no. If you get rid, yeah, yeah, that one and that one. Yes. Right. Uh, I might now have you should to... see. So now I'm not you sure if you can move it in the middle of a draw, but uh, no, actually, well, it's because um, they're both. So 
yeah, they're both on top of each other at this point. I would right. have to uh, change the size. So if, so if I actually call this before that set position, it has a width and a height parameter as well. So I'll just do um, like 1,000 and 1,000. And now if I put this one at coordinates 500 or 550 rather, uh, now it should draw two of them. Right. Uh, right. Except have... I got to put the position back to zero. <laughs> there we go. So basically yeah. it does it does actually kind of like now now you're as you didn't end one drawing and begin the oh, other one so now they're both being drawn in one Canva which is so basically the begin and end just tells the GDI where the it, that you are in the same Canva at that moment if you end you remove the Canva and now you're going to start a new drawing yep. so now I, I understand more or less the concept of what is going on in this situation um, and the reasoning behind, you know, having to start and end. <laughs> but it is interesting, actually, how it works. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't usually use it this way, so a little bit fumbling, but um, I, let me close this one here. But just imagine, look at that. So that is a transparent window, technically. So I could just create a yeah. window that gives me information about the computer in a transparent overlay that I could have, you know, all the time around, you know. Well, it's like, like this one's transparent and you can adjust it yeah. on the fly. So you can have it be fully uh, transparent, transparent or fully opaque, you know. Right, that's awesome. <clears throat> and there's there's no performance difference between the two, so. Right, and that's, that's you what I'm to actually be. looking for. It is very, very interesting. Yeah. Not only for, and this is the thing, not only for gaming, there's a lot of possibilities for using this particular class in different situations. Um, whenever you want to make it look however you want it to look, then this is a very good class for using it because now you have full control of almost everything. Now, the only thing is that it would be, um, this is kind of like a, a the basic class because the only thing that you can do is are lines, circles, uh, squares, rectangles, right? So that's what you can do. On top of this library, then you build another library that takes those rectangles and creates a control, for example. Exactly, yeah. And then can... it is easier for somebody else to say, give me an edit control. Then I would use this class to build with the rectangles and circles and stuff, the edit control the way you want it. So because your class, I cannot tell it, like, give me an edit control because it doesn't know how to do that. It just right. gives me squares and circles, right? So you are giving me the first layer. Now, on top of this layer, I could build more complex GUIs or more complex images or more complex stuff that then I can make it easier for a user to just say like, give me uh, this type of window and it would just build it for you based on this building blocks that you just gave me. So I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I give the, everybody it, the I, tools, it's up right, to them exactly. to use them. So. Right, exactly. But it does uh, support uh, images as well. So you can obviously have your own custom buttons or you know other things too. Right. And then, um, it supports uh, rotation as well, which I know GDI does, but it's like a really overly complex way to do it. And this one, you just literally put in the degrees and you're good to go. Awesome. So it is actually very easy to animate with it, right? Yeah. The only thing is like with um, it's whether you want to use sprite sheets or just have a ton of different images is up to you. But it's one situation where. I gave you the basic tools. You could create another function specifically for sprite sheets and it would be super easy to animate. You just, you give it the size of your sprite sheet, how many there is, and then you just select the frame you want. And it's like, it's just done. So I, I think earlier we saw an example of one because I, to me, I don't know what a sprite sheet is, but it, it was multiple, it's a, like a list of them. I, I think it is just yeah. one image that contains many frames in just that one stripe, like a very long stripe. In this case, it's just four frames. Yep. But for example, in games, if you have an animation of somebody walking, the full animation can be one line of images, one right next to the other, instead of having them separate. Right. And yeah. Like tell it, here's how many. So, you know, it'll do the math for you, right? You say there's four. Oh, okay. I'm going to take this length, divide it equally into four parts. Into four parts, right. Now I know my frames, so to speak. Does that sound right? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, so the one I have, right, it is pretty simple. It's just got four, but you can have sprite sheets that have, you know, maybe 
15 uh horizontal then like 15 vertical and it's just a ton okay and um it, if you made a function for it it would be able to animate sprites just so like easily the but whole okay now quick thing or you could have them consensually numbered or some different files as well yeah there's there's a lot of ways to do it yeah right exactly that that was his point but in this case so in in this particular instance how does the function knows where one frame starts and when the other one begin, uh, ends? Like when, when this doesn't know, because Joe mentioned kind of like the width, is that what yeah. you're passing on top here uh, on one of the, of the parameters? Yeah, so the parameters are up here and yeah. um, there's the destination um, uh, rectangle and the, the source. So what I do is I have a function that gives you the, the image size, the dimensions, and Unfortunately, like it's kind of up to you to know what the the size of them are. So I have to hard code the actual 32 because these are 32 by 32. Okay. And um, I don't know if there might be a better way to do that, but I think at the end, the user will have to supply the size of the actual like um, rectangle of each frame. I would, I would actually just suggest something that I just noticed. Um, those, it's better if you pass them as arrays, like those four, the the for example the destination x y with height as one array that contains four and the same with the source x y with so you would have two parameters which expects arrays instead of having eight parameters because sometimes when i'm actually typing a function i would forget <laughs> which parameter i'm at yeah. right? especially if i leave one of them blank right but if i pass an array right um, it would be a little bit easier for me to have one line with the array with the four parameters, another line with the other, and then just pass those two guys very easily. And if one of the array um, indexes is blank, then the function should know what to do with it. If the X yeah. is blank, then just make it zero or whatever. But I think um, I think it is a very good way of just destination and source uh, with these four points. It would make it way well, easier because the point is they're they're all related, right? Right, they are. They yeah, are. yeah. It's just one one You're thing. Probably using them somewhere else already, possibly, and why not make it a nice tight unit that you can refer to? And well, I, I have thought about that. The only issue is a lot of the people that download this are like kind of newbies. Like they're oh, right. you know they don't even know what arrays are. So I <laughs> I, I, with, I have people on example, Discord all the time that yeah. message me and it's they class. they give me um. They give me their code and they're like, I don't know why it's not working. And I'm just yeah, like, whoa, yeah, here, yeah. okay, this is all wrong. <laughs> what, 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 what I would still say should be you're using a class though, right? Like the second you step into a class, this is where I'd say is come on, it, it, it's it, leveled up already. So yeah. you're, you're you're minimizing some parts to make it clearer in using a class, which is you know, not an entry level thing. Right. So so basically using an object is way harder than using an array. So if you, in the example, just make this two liner, you just put one line with an array, just square bracket, four points, which is your destination. The other one is source, four lines. And then you just put them in your, like, it would be so clear for them really quickly what is going on. But to your point, I mean, there is no right answer. Right? No, of course. Yeah. It depends. It depends on the users, of it, course. It just gets back to, we're used to it too, right? Like people send you stuff and you're like, <laughs> You know what? What were you? What were you even trying to do? Like I don't understand. And I'm not <laughs> making fun of it. We're all trying, right? Like this is the thing: is like, look, we're all different levels. But yeah, it's. Uh, I, I've decided I'd rather have good, concise code that makes sense to me, and just tell people, hey, go go take Joe's objects course, right, and learn how to use this because um, it's you know it's just a better approach. I'm actually really impressed with the with this particular class because it has a, a ton of possibilities. And as you mentioned, you're giving the tools for some other people to create very amazing stuff yeah. without having to eat up on your <laughs> CPU because image search and you know <laughs> that's not going to work out. For Let me show you else. here um, the stats here for this one. It's using about. One to two percent of my GPU and no CPU at all. And when you move the mouse inside, let me see. Then uh, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, two point two point two two point three. You know what, Shane, will be really cool is to have another script not using your approach and do those, you know, side by side and, and just kind of yeah, just just compare how much it is. No help. Just yeah. just making them move this this line that he's making whenever he moves the mouse. 
Doing it with any other function would be catastrophic. <laughs> you know, just getting the mouse position and drawing something that stays there for a few minutes, for a few seconds, that particular animation would take a lot of resources if you do it with the CPU only. So, yeah. It does use a little bit of CPU when I move. I think that's for creating the, uh, the, um, the arrays for the trail and then uh, right. doing the math on it, maybe. I'm not sure. But even right, when, like, the, the moving the window wouldn't use any because it's just moving it. So it doesn't use um, any uh, GPU. But it uses CPU, obviously, to, yeah. to do that. But it is pretty efficient, though. Well, and this is where I just, it, this is more of a comment than, you know, uh, I'm not knocking what you're doing because I think it's awesome, right, that this is more efficient. But like I said, a lot of people who, especially people who are doing gaming stuff, which is what I'm going to guess is a lot of people that are going to be using this, they're not programmers. They don't they don't care so much about that efficiency that we do, right? But but they don't. It's still, you're providing a great thing that will make it better. But the, the true benefits to them are just the simplicity, right, of like you. Exactly, know. yeah. They don't care about it, but they will complain. They will say, like, it makes well, everything slow, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, they will say, like, it is so slow. But, yeah, it's true. Very yeah, I, I have one guy using it, and he um, he was testing the limits of it. And uh, he's, I think he did, like, 100,000 draw lines, and it took him, like, half a second or something. And then, like, um, the with the image scan class as well it's just like really fast for him and it's and he's pretty help or thankful for it which is cool it's always nice to see people using it you know to the most getting the most out of it so yeah it is nice we actually um i would have reached out to you to, to make sure you didn't care but we were going to borrow your the last cl the video we did on um was it the image search what was it no, the speed, yeah. Oh, on, on windows that were even behind other windows. You know, yeah. That we done. And uh, we were making our objects course, and we were like, hey, let's do one more example of augmenting a class and how you can, you know, still have the original, but we can add to it. And um, we went in and, and actually, like, well, you know, he said that there was no, like, clicking, you know, finding and clicking. And then we went in and looked, and you actually had... It, you already created it. <laughs> you yeah. had this control yeah. click, and, and I was like, oh, he, he already did it. <laughs> Okay, but yeah. that was a uh, somebody hit me up and they said, "Hey, is there a way to like click in the background?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'll put it in there for you real quick." You know? Yeah, exactly. That's what it boils down to is, uh, you know, that's what people the, finding it's great, but they still want to be able to do something with it, right? And yeah. I, and I, I totally understand from a programmer's perspective. Hey, this is this is what this does, but people that want to use our stuff aren't always programmers, and they just want one thing that does it all, right? And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. true. Yeah. So some things, like some people suggest some things and I'll add them because it's like, okay, I can see use for us. So other people have very specific niche things. And I'm like, I don't think I can really put that in there because it's just so niche. It's like you know, nobody's going to oh, use it except you. Yeah. No, no, like, no. That's why I give you the source code. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you, can, you can go ahead and use it how much, however you want. Now, here's the thing. Um, you, you, this, this, these two classes that you have created, they work hand in hand because one of them finds stuff and this one actually draws stuff. So you can yeah. actually find with one and draw with the other, right? And yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is very interesting. So these two functions, those two classes, actually. You, like you, uh, you, like you, I showed you, earlier, this one right here, um, it it physically, or not physically, but it scans the health bar from the window, and then it, it draws lines from the four corners of the health bar to the four corners of the screen, just as like an example. Mm -hmm. and, every, and like drawing this uh, circle and line around this thing, that's being found every, every second in real time or every, you know, 50 milliseconds or so and being drawn. So... It's not like it's doing math to determine how much to raise it. It's always finding and always drawing to it. Awesome. Same thing with the, the lines as well. So, But it doesn't have to be used just in games. It can be used for anything, like you said. So it's whatever the user wants. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool, man. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. It's, uh, I'm sure people are going to enjoy uh, <laughs> the heck out of it. And, um, I hope so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cool, and like I said, I'll put the link to your channel um, on the video here, and people can come over and check it out and get the... I'll put a link to your, your GitHub just to make it convenient as well, but yeah. Sounds good to me. Thanks again. Okay. Have yeah, a nice thanks. time. Bye.